so sad, sad, sad. So nice to see you again. So this is our part two, Pali course. So I hope uh, for this uh, series, uh, for this part two Pali classes, we will cover uh, several other important uh, discourses also. But as you have seen, you know, in our part one, is it then going to, to learn also? We will focus all on this uh, dhamma, what do you call the, the protection uh, suttas, okay, that use uh, frequently, chanted frequently by Buddhist monk. Okay, so I think uh, you, you can learn that also, it's very important. <laughs> and today we will continue looking at these Atanatiya suttas, okay, Atanatiya suttas. So I think I also have briefly <clears throat> explained. Right, the importance of these uh, anata, ana, atanatiya suttas. Okay, so anyway, it's very important for, for a Buddhist monk, say like if you have any, any people, you know, being haunted by, uh, you know, haunted so-called. <laughs> Usually monks uh, at their last resort, they will chant these atanatiya suttas. Okay, so it seems that this atanatiya sutta is very important for Buddhist monk, you know, to... But of course, to me, when I look at this, as, as you read these uh, Atanatiya Suttas, uh, uh, then you know for yourself, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, for people being haunted, say, for example, usually we don't chant these Atanatiya Suttas, okay? We will chant these uh, Karamita Suttas, Kanda Suttas, okay? So these are the Suttas we chant. Now, <clears throat> And okay, so as we read the suttas, we will explain. Okay, <clears throat> yeah. You see, in these suttas also, we will deal with these uh, four Chatu Maharajika Devas also, right? Deal with these four. And then you look at these four, you see these four guardian kings, you have uh, four direction, right? Each king control, you know, the respective uh, uh, so-called Devas. Okay, when you look at these devas, uh, they, are not, uh, they are not the full devas. When we talk about the devas for these realms, uh, they are half devas and half human. Okay, half devas and half humans. Or we can call them like, uh, you know, worldly spirits or deities, you see. And generally, we call them non-human, non-human, amanus. Okay, amanus. So you look at this uh, non-human, and basically, they're divided into four groups, right? Are controlled by these four guardian king. Like these four groups are Gandhava, you know, one group, another group is Nagas, right? Dragon. And Gandhava here is also referred to the uh, what do you call this uh, musician, the celestial musician. <laughs> celestial musician. Um, or the flying, you know, flying, flying, uh, flying musician. <laughs> Another one is uh, Yaksha. I think Yaksha, you have heard that. And like in, 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 in Thailand, you, you find these Yakshas everywhere. Uh, they, are, they are one of the Dharma protectors. And then another one is uh, Kumbanda. Okay, Kumbandas. Right? And some say, you know, this one belonging to a class of Ashura, right? Or some say belonging to the Peta. Okay. So anyway, uh, still very controversial, but anyway, we just regard them. So, <clears throat> so these are the four non-humans. Huh? They are controlled by these four great kingdoms. And of course, um, you know, sometimes uh, these uh, non-human, they will come and attack us so-called. So we, we chant these suttas, right, for that reason. <clears throat> okay, now, uh, before we start, we can... Uh, chant these uh, Atanatiya Suttas. Uh, this is a shorter version. Huh? And we can chant together, right? Okay, so you can, you know, you can chant. Uh, we, we, how do we need to open the, the, the mic together or no? No need, huh? Otherwise, <laughs> so just listen to my chanting. So anyway, you, you chant it, you chant at home, huh? Uh, Auntie, I'll follow you together with you. Okay, yeah. Vipasi Sachanamatu Chakumantas Sri Mato 
सिके सापे च नमातो साबोत्तानो काम पीनो वैस भोस च नमातो नहात कास तपासीनो नमातो काको सांदस मा रसेना पामादीनो कौन गमनास नमातो ब्राह्मनास वो सीमातो कास पास च नमातो वेपमुतास साबदी आंगिरसास नमातो सकियपुतास सरीमातो यो इमांग दामां देशे सिसाबदो कापानो दानं ये चापे निबुतालोके यताबुतां विपासिसों ते जना अभिसुनात महान्तावितरा वित सारदा हितं देवमनोसान यं नमसांति गोदमं विजाचरण सांपानं महान्तं वित सारदं एते चान्ये च सांबदा अनेक सातकोतियों साबे बुद्धा समसमाप साबे बुद्धा महिदिकां साबे दस बालोपेता वेशाराजेहु पागतां साबे ते पाते जानांति आसाभां तानमोतमं सिहनादानादांते ते परिसासु विसारदां ब्रह्मचाकं बाबतेंति लोके आपतिवातियं उपेताबु ददामे ही आता रसाहिनायकं बातें सलाकानो पेता असितानो भयंजनादरां भयमाप भाय सोपाबा साबेते मुनि कोंजरां बुद्धा साबानु नोएते साबे कीना सावाजिनां महापापा महातेजा महापान्या महावलां महाकारुनिकादिर साबे साना सुकावाहां दीपानाता पतिताच तानाले नाच पानीनां गति बंधु महेशासा सर्नाच हितेशिनो सदेवकास लोकास साबे एते परायनां ते साहां सरसापादे वंदामि पुरिसोतमे बेंचानो बेंचानो सॉरी वचा सामाना साचेवा वंदामे ते तातागते सायने आसने ताने गमने चापि साबदां सदा सुकेन राकांतु बुद्धा सांति करातुवां तेहितो राकितो सांतो 
Moto sabbaye hiche Sabaro gavini moto sabasan tapa vajito Sabavera atikanto ni buto chatua baba Te sang sachena silena kanti met ta ba le na che te pi am he nu ra kan tu a ro ge na su ge na che bo ra ti ma su mi di sa ba ge san ti bo ta ma he di ga te pi am he nu ra Kan tu arroge na suke na che. Da ki na smi di sa ba ge santi deva mahi di ka. Te pi am he nu ra kan tu arroge na suke na che. Pachi ma smi di sa ba ge Santi na ga ma he di ga. Te pi am he nu ra kan tu a ro ge na su ke na che. O ta ra smi di sa ba ge santi a ka ma he di ga. Te pi am he nu ra kan tu a ro ge na su ke na che. Purra ti me na da te ra to da ki ni na virul ha ko. Panchi me na viru pe ko ku viru u te ra di sa. Chata ro te maha raja Loka palaya sa sinom. Te pi am he nu ra kan tu a ro ge na su ke na che. A ka sa ta che bo ma ta de va na ga ma he di ka. Te hi am he nu ra kan tu a ro ge na su ke na che. Kan tu aroge na suke na che. Idi manto che ye deva vasanta idha sasane. Te pi am he nu ra kan tu aroge na suke na che. Sabiti o viva jantu so goro govinasato. Mate pavadvantaraya so kidiga yoko bhava. Abhivadana silesa nichamvodda pachayino. Chattaro dhamma. Vadanti ayuvano sukam balam. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, so I think we start from beginning. Huh? Start from beginning. So these are mostly the verses, uh, um, you know, respecting to different, different Buddha. So here start with, uh, you know, worshipping to the past seven Buddhas. Okay. So, okay. So, these are the seven Buddhas. Huh? The past seven Buddhas. Uh, start with the Vipassi. So, Vipassi is uh, Chanamattu Chakumantas Sirimato. Okay. Sikhi Sapi Chanamattu Sabha Buddhano Kampino. Okay, so you have this verse, uh, and of course we had to analyze it like the word namatu. Namatu is from namo atu. Okay, so this is the compound, right? So anyway, for our Bali learner, we have to be able to split it, right? It's from the namatu. So usually, um, okay, now 
if you look at this uh, Namat 2, uh, usually you will find, uh, you know, they will write something like that. Okay. Like, uh, okay. So you'll find this not for apostrophe. Okay. Apostrophe. Right. Namat 2. Uh, then you know. But usually people also write like that. Huh? So it's not necessary. Uh, namatu. So if you want to split it, it's a namo and atu. Okay, atu. Yeah. Can you see this? No, it's not clear. <coughs> okay, so namatu. So na namo, uh, if you want to analyze this uh, namo, Right, it's come from the stem ending as namas, right? Namas I mean uh, the salutation or the homage, right? So when they decline it in the nominative singular, it's a namo, okay? Just like namo tasa bhagavato, right? Namo tasa bhagavato arahato mean the homage to him. Yeah, so this namo. So. Um, it is uh, a, what do you call namas ending, as ending. Uh, and this atu is imperative, right? So uh, imperative, right? the third person singular from the root as. Okay. Uh, okay. Chakumantas. Uh, then we learn another thing is called this uh, chakuman. Uh, so anyway, we look at this. <clears throat> Okay. You see, you look at this chaku, it's from the chaku. Okay, chaku is a noun. Okay, when you add the man, or sometimes it's also man, that's also okay. Two form is used, right? So man, chaku man. So what is this man? Uh, this is a possessive suffix, uh, possessive suffix. Uh, it means that one, it means that one who possess eyes. One who possesses eyes, possesses eyes, okay, eyes. Uh, so it's chakuman. So when you decline it, right, you find uh, like chakuma. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, we have come across many times the bakava. Okay, so I hope bakava. You know the bakava. Bakava, bakava, huh? this is bakava. Bakava means the blessed one. Okay, so you want to know more about this bakawa? It's from the bhaga. Bhaga is a noun. Eight bakawan. Okay, bakawan. Same thing also, bakawan, or uh, you have sometimes the what form. Uh, in other places, you have the man form. That's okay. The what and one, this is a possessive suffix. Right? So it means that possessive, one who possess the fortune, baka, baga means fortune. So the whole thing become bakava, the blessed one, bakava. Sorry, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> one who possess um, fortune uh, means the fortunate one, you see? Mm. So you have, um, for Pali learner, uh, we have to know there are many ending, there are many case ending. Uh, so we have to be able to identify, you know, different case ending, yeah? a fortunate one. <clears throat> and what else? Uh, Siri Mato also the same thing, right? Uh, Siri, you know the Siri, Siri means the glory, right? So man is a possessing glory, right? Possessing glory. And then another one like Sabbhut Anukampino, right? It's a compound of Sabbhut and Anukampino. Huh? You look at this Bhut and A, no, you know, these two A, when you join them together, become long A. Okay, then there is also another form of uh, ending. Okay, ending. And this ending is IN ending. It means that it's also another form of what we call a possessive suffix in the IN form. 
Okay. Uh, okay, so there is another ending. Uh, so like this one, Anukampino. It's from Anukamping. Uh, it's, from, it's something like Anukampa. Anukampa. Anukampa is a noun. When you add this I-N-E, right? Then it becomes an adjective. Become an adjective. It means that one who is compassionate. Okay? So Anukampa means compassion. So one who is compassionate, so a compassionate one. Okay, so you see there are many forms, you know, you can add to the now and then become an objective, you know, so, so you should be able to identify it, then you can, you can, then there's a fun uh, learning Pali. Okay, so now we look at this. We pass namatu. So now I split all the sandhi. Huh? So when you learn the Pali, learn to split all the sandhi as much as possible. Split them. Split them, okay. Split them. Then you can see very clearly, right? We persist. Then you can explain the grammar. Now more after you can explain the grammar, something like that. Then afterwards, uh, you 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 show their relationship, <clears throat> okay. So as usual, uh, you look at this sentence. Uh, first, uh, come in your mind to find the root, okay? to find the verb. So in this case, the verb is atu, imperative that person singular. Okay, may there be what? And then you find the uh, the subject. Okay, the subject. Mm. Okay, is there any subject? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it seems the subject is now more the salutation. So may there be salutation. Mm. So let's the subject here. Yeah? And what else? You look at this sister, sister, Siri Martha. All these things are genitive, but used as a dative. Okay, uh, from the root here number. See, see, so I try to explain all these things. In fact, I'm teaching this to my Pali students, huh? to my Pali students or to my Sanskrit students. Uh, that's why I asked one of my students to come in uh, to learn something else. Huh? So this one is more to the to the chanting, uh, not to the sutta, to the chanting, but of course, it's also from the suttas. Uh, but for Theravada, we chant this sutta. So then we persist a genitive. Uh, sister is genitive, but used as a dative. Uh, this is quite common. Um, and then you have another one. Chakumantasa is also genitive. Right? And what else? It's, it's from the Chakuman. Huh? So you see, if you learn like this, you, you, you are able to split them huh? from Chakuma. It's one who possess the eyes. And then this one is adjective to the Vipassi, the, the Vipassi Buddha, he possess the eyes. Okay. Um, same thing also, and genitive, uh, he, he possess the glory also, it's also adjective to the Vipassi. So you see, uh, let there be. Uh, so this is in the form of imperative. Let there be homage uh, to the Vipassi Buddha here. Who possess of the eyes? Okay, usually eyes, uh, then you have to define it. Possess of eyes for what? Earlier we have seen possess of eyes mean the sun. <laughs> but here possess of eyes refer to the wisdom and glory. Uh, so you can see if you look at the English, it's clearly possess of the eyes and possess of glory are adjective. To the Vipassi Buddhas. Okay. And next. Huh? So, Siki Sapi Chanamatu, same thing also. Right. Uh, so, yeah, Siki Sapi. Siki Sapi is another, uh, the second Buddhas huh? of these seven Buddhas in sequence. Siki. So, may they all be homage to the Siki Buddha. And then what is this? Sababhut anukampino. This is also another adjective, right? Gen uh, genitive, adjective to sikisapi. Mm. So, let there be homage to the Sikhi Buddhas, right? The great compassion towards all beings. So you see, this is a compound of three numbers, three members. You have the Sabha one and the Buddha another one. And then Anukampino. So I think, uh, so if you look at these things, uh, it's quite free for you to render the meaning. Uh, so it depends how you look at it. Of course, we have to look at the context, you know, so to translate this. Like in this case, uh, 
my translation is the great compassionate towards all being. You see, towards all being. Okay, uh, so so you have to look at the, the compound. Uh, because I told you earlier, there are four types of compound, basically in brief. Uh, uh, in brief, there are four types of compound. So I will briefly go through them. Um, this is a compound. Okay. Uh, one compound is like, let's say like you have the compound A and B, okay? A and B. The first compound is like Duanda compound, okay? Duanda compound. Duanda compound is like A and B, okay? Uh, you have to define uh, what, what is your relationship in that compound. And then another one is a genitive, oh no, no genitive, it's Tatpurusha compound. Okay, this is like B of A. Okay, B of A, sorry. <laughs> B of A. And then the third one is uh, Kamadhariya. Okay, it's A. Except it's B. Okay. <laughs> this is how you look at this, huh? A compound. And then another one is all Bahubrihi. This Bahubrihi, in fact, is adjective. When you, when, you, when you take this as an adjective, then you have to say A, B. Huh? A, B, the whole thing, this A, B, the compound. Uh, is an adjective, say like you have C, okay, another noun. It means that this C is a noun outside the A, B. Okay, so basically, you know, of course the compound is very complicated, but once you understand these four types of compound, you can apply to the, the, the whole complex of compound. Uh, so you have these four types. So like in this case, Sabahut Anukampino, right? Uh, it's basically this is something like a Tapurusha compound, but you take it as a, a locative case. Eh? It means that uh, the great compassion with regard to all beings, with regard to. So it can fall under the category of Tapurusha compound, right? So it depends how you define the compound. Huh? So don't be scared of compound. Like the first lesson, I think I'm scared most of the people away. <laughs> when you are reciting this Panchasila, right? The Panchasila is such a complicated compound, right? It's very complicated. Under the compound, you have the several forms of grammar, eh? several forms of uh, what do you call a uh, different, different compound. Okay, so again, you really have to understand the context before you can translate. So this is the second part. Uh, okay, okay, now we look at the next one. Vesa bohusa cha namatu nahata kasa tapasino namatu kaku sandhasa marasena pamadhino Okay, so some of the vocabulary. Uh, uh, so, okay, Vesa bohusa is uh, the name of the Buddhist. Okay, so we respect. And then what is this? Nahata Kasa. Nahata. Nahata is a PPP. <laughs> this PPP mean again, remind you, it's a past participle. Okay, from the root sna. Oh, na. But of course, this, this form is very rarely. Huh? Sometimes you find the NH -N Nahata Kasa, huh? of one who has bath. Beth, right? Washed. Okay, so tapasino. Tapasino is, uh, you know, tapasi. Tapas. Tapasi is from tapasin, right? This is I N ending, <laughs> another form. So, yeah, one devoted to religious authority, tapasi. Yeah, this is also another compound, like marasena, pamadhino. Okay. Uh, Pamadhino is from Pamadhin. 
is IN ending. So, <laughs> of course, it's not easy for beginner, but you know, uh, you know, it's it's uh, eyes opener. It's where you look at this different different ending, uh, different different ending. So it means that one who is power, uh, mean powerful, or one having uh, power, <laughs> so <laughs> powerful. Same sena mean army, uh, so army of evil one, uh, so ever to crush. Uh, the army of evil one. It means that the deformers. So now, so these are the vocabulary. Okay, now. Okay, so when you look at this, uh, I we look at this, uh, what do you call? Past participle. Okay, usually I have the word like PP, okay? PP here may simply refer to past participle. We keep aside the active, or passive or middle. We just simply call it a past participle first. Okay. It's just like English when you have a go, right? Especially when we were young time uh, in the school, uh, we learned go when gone. Uh. So this gone is a participle. Okay. It's participle. So or what? What else? Uh, <clears throat> or like uh buy, okay, bought. Bought also. <laughs> I don't know when you see when we were young time, a uh, teacher never told us uh, that this past participle is also an adjective to an object like uh, you know the, the fruit. Um, sorry. Oh sorry. Oh simply just things that have been purchased, that have been bought, okay. <laughs> Yeah. We can translate like, I don't know, can we say bought things? It depends how you, you translate it. Hmm. So you look at this kind of grammar. Of course, you can say that he bought things. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is this bought uh, is an adjective also to, an, to a noun here. At the same time, it also has a verbal function. Is it, oh, is there any example? The clear example. Oh, eaten. Okay. <laughs> Maybe another good word also, eaten. Hmm? Um. Eaten. Okay. Like eat, add, right? Eaten. Okay. All right. So, eaten food. Clear, no? Good general, the fair example. Huh? Stolen. Oh, yeah, stolen. Yeah, stolen also. Eh, stolen. Huh? Stolen item. Yeah, maybe good at much better, much clearer. Taken. Huh? Taken. Yes. Yeah. What, what I'm trying to say is this like eaten or stolen, huh? uh, eaten food or stolen items. Huh? You see, though in the PP form, past participle form, but it also has. It also serves as an adjective describing the food. Describe it. Or you also can translate the item that uh, the item has been stolen, or food has been eaten, or eaten food, or stolen item, or item uh, has been stolen. You see? So you see, when you have this PP form, you are free to translate. So that's why you find in our body text how you find. The word, this kind of past participle form uh, occurred in every place. Okay, so this is also another form that you can use to, to refer to the, to the verb. You see, verb. You take it as a verb, like item has been stolen, or item uh, is stolen, or item was stolen. So you are free to translate. So it has uh, several functions. So. Okay, so this is what I, I, I want to say. <clears throat> so in this case, okay, atu, right? We come across this, right? With uh, Vesabhus, Natas is adjective to this, right? PP. So it's from the, okay. <clears throat> uh, Tapasino is also adjective to it, <clears throat> right? 
So let that be homage to the Vesabhu Buddha, right? Is it Natas is adjective to this? Who has watched away all the deformments? Watch away all deformments. Huh? Watched. So you have to interpret this Nata as from the Rusna, mean wash away all deformments. So it means that one who has destroyed huh, deformments. And Tapasino, and who possess uh, good ascetic practices. So it's clear. It's clear. Okay, so this is how you look at it. So you have to split them. <clears throat> then next. Yeah, so you see, this Namato is not necessarily the end. You can have it everywhere. Right? In this case, Namato start first. Or, you, you know, usually we will result like Kaku Sandahase Namato, right? But in this case, it becomes Namato Kaku Sandahase. <laughs> uh, so this is another Buddha's name, Kaku Sandha. And, okay. Then Marasena Pamadhino. Uh, this is also another form of genitive describing the Kaku Sandhas. So let there be homage to Kaku Sandha Buddha who defeated okay, the, the, the Pamadhino. Pamadhino means uh, you know the clash, the crush, eh? very, very powerful, crushed. Uh, you know, all the army of the Mara. So you can translate who defeated. Uh, you see, who here clearly show you is an adjective. So this is how I, I translate it. Who defeated the army of Mara. Defeated the army of Mara. Okay. So next. Huh? Kona Gamanasa Namatu. Brahmanas Vusi Mato Kasapasacha Namatu Vipamutas Sabadi. Okay, there are fewer here to learn. Vusi Mato. Right, it's from the Vusiman, also the same thing. Uh, or sometimes you find the Vasiman. Uh. Anyway, this word is still uh, ambiguous. Uh. And in this case, the Vusi Mato Vusi is one who has reached. The perfection, right? So, like an arahat, yeah. one who has uh, reached the perfection of a chest, living, usimato. <laughs> or one who is living a, a brahmacharya life, something like that. Huh? And vipamutasa, uh, vipamutasa is from, is also a genetic approach, released. Okay, mutta, mutta, released. And sabadhi uh, is an adverb, okay, everywhere or in every aspect. So these are the vocabulary. Mm. <clears throat> okay, now we look at this. Kona gamanas namatu, brahmanas usimato. Okay. So, no, I don't really go and explain this Namatu again because we repeat it many times. So, Kona Manga, Kona, Kona Ga Manasa is the name of the Buddhas, right? And Brahmanasa, adjective. And Usimata also adjective to it. So, this is the translation. Let there be homage to the Kona Gamana Buddha, uh, Brahmana, and Usimato. Brahmana means the noble life, right? Uh, lived the noble life. Eh, no, sorry. Uh, here, Usimato. Uh, lived the noble life. And who has reached the perfection uh, or in just living. You see, when you talk about the Brahmana, you see, of course, here the Brahmana in the Buddhist context, of course, in the Hindu context, right? This Brahmana referred to a class of uh, people, the Brahmin. Right? So they are considered to be the, the highest caste. They are supposed to be, you know, coming up from the mouth of the Brahma. And so they consider themselves as a very high class people. Right? But of course, in the Buddhist context, huh, Buddha used the word Brahmana, but referred to those who has reached the perfection. Okay? Uh, here, probably referred to an Arahant, you see, who has already reached perfection. 
And Wusi Mata, Wusi Mata is lived the noble life. Uh, so, adjective very clearly. Huh? And another one, Kasapasa, one of the Buddha's name, Kasapasa, Shetnamatu, Vipamuttasa, Sabadhi. Same thing again, right? all adjective to this. Huh? You see, remember, in the Pali, uh, a lot of these genitive cases are uh, used in the dative case, mean to, used in the dative case. But grammatically, it's a genitive, but used as a dative case, like to. Sabadhi is a verb, okay? So this is the translation. Let there be homage to the Kasapa Buddha, who has, or who was free. Who has, who, who has been free from defilement. So you had to interpret it. Huh? Free from what? Free from defilement in every respect. Okay, so beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> so we are really go into the suttas. Right? So this is a very typical, you know, the sutta reading. <laughs> so when you read at this kind of suttas reading, you will come across of various form of grammar, okay? Uh, various form of grammar. But you need not to worry so much because I have read a lot of suttas. Uh, if you can understand why I'm talking all these things, uh, in fact, you can read the whole text already. They are not that complicated. Not that complicated, okay? So these are different forms. Uh, so, yeah, knowing the, knowing the vocabulary is one thing, but the grammar is also another very important thing. Huh? Should be able to, to detect it. Uh, what is this? What is this? What is this? Then you can refer to the dictionary. Huh? If this kind of uh, suffixes, huh? like possessive suffix are uh, in different form, you are, if you are not able to detect it, then you won't be able to find from the dictionary because the dictionary will won't, won't have all this vocabulary. So you have to... To look at you know these uh, suffixes as well. Okay, now Angi Rasas Namatu Sakya Putas Sri Mato. Yo imang dhammang de se si sabdoka pano dhan uh pano danang. So we look at this Angi Rasas is the name of the Buddhas, right? Sri Mato. It's a genitive for Srima. We have seen this, right? Possessing glory. And the yo is a relative pronoun. So he who. Okay? He who. The is a is a verb. Huh? It's our uh, aries. Aries means the past. That person singular, right? From the root dish mean to points, right? So the simply mean preach. Okay? Preach. And this long compound, Sabaduka Panodana, is from Sabaduka Apanodana. Apanodana. Huh? So you see, when you have the two long A, then become long A. Huh? So you see, like this kind of long compound, uh, you, you, you split it, then you can see clearly. Then you can find from dictionary is Apanodana. Maybe you may ask, how do I know this is Apanodana? So this is a matter of how you. You see, your 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 master of vocabulary. Huh? So, of or oh, the easiest way for you to find from dictionary, you try to find from Anudana. If you don't get it, then for sure it's Apanudana. <laughs> uh, so, so in this Apanudana, uh, you know, the form is accusative remover, uh, remover. Right. So yeah, we look at the seven one Angirasas. Mm, okay, yeah, Sakya Putasa Serimato. Sakya Putasa is also adjective. Yeah, you see, the, it seems that the Buddha has another name, Angira, uh, because he's a, he's a Sakya Putta and a Serimato. Okay, uh, homage to the Angira Buddha, who is the son of the Sakya, okay, and glory, and possessing glory, right? Possessing glory. <clears throat> You got it? Yeah, you got it. Huh? So, mm, so this is how you know you can see clearly huh, their relationship. Huh? When you say they are adjective to the noun, huh, then they have to agree with the gender, with the case, with the number, or have to agree with. Hmm? 
So this, uh, so the Buddha has another name called Angirasa Buddha. Uh, so <clears throat> you imam dharma, they say. See, okay, yeah. So look at this. Um, okay, so yes, yeah, we find a the verb. They say see, uh, and then once you have the verb, you look at the noun. Yeah, it's the third person singular. The noun. Uh, the noun is your he who. <clears throat> And after finding the noun, okay, the subject, then you look at the subject object then. Yeah? The object usually is in the accusative. Right? Here, imam. And the dharma is an, ob is an object. Imam is a, is a pronoun, right? Describing the dharma, I mean this dharma. Okay, so you can say like, uh, uh, you know, he who preach this dharma. Okay. And then sabaduka anupa apanudana is accusative, right? You see, same thing, masculine, masculine, accusative, and singular. Adjective to the dharma. Okay, so, so then how the translation would be he who preach this doctrine, right? This doctrine. Uh, what kind of doctrine? The doctrine that is the removal of all suffering. Okay, so once you have all this grammar right, then you can translate easily. Uh, you, you can translate it easily. So you, you see the relationship, right? He who preached this doctrine, right? He who is the subject, preach is a verb. This doctrine, right? Uh, doctrine is an object. This right, is a pronoun, right? Describing the doctrine. And the removal of all suffering is an object. Adjective to this doctrine. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so you look at this, uh, the structure is that the things, the whole thing made clear to you. Huh? Uh, so, okay. Huh? Yeah, I think this is also a very good answer. I think I need to copy some of this for my students, Bali class. So, I have to create a lot of, uh, I have to find a lot of, um, you know, the sentence huh, that taken from the suttas uh, for the exercise. Mm. Okay, so now we look at another one. Huh? So, so far, so good, yeah? Uh, Russell? <laughs> yes, Bante, we do have uh, questions. Okay. Uh, we you get uh, Sister Elaine? Sister Elaine, can you show the uh, questions from the chat box? Yeah, sure. Okay. For everyone, information, um, Bante this morning has also guided uh, talking about the sharing, about one and a half hours. And uh, I think the questions was really overwhelmed. So make use of the chance and then ask Bante as many as you have the doubts. Okay. Sister Elaine, over to you. <coughs> Bante, can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah. You see, the Chaku Mantu is this is a Pali ending. Huh? The, 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 I think this one is this one, Chaku had to write properly, C A K K U. Uh, of course, in the, in the, in the Pali, you know, the traditional learning, huh? they, they, the ending is Mantu, but I think we have to be, you know, standardized. Huh? We have to be standardized the whole thing. Uh, okay. Uh, Chakumantu, okay. So then Siki Buddha Sababhuta Anukampi Ko. Okay. <laughs> uh, this allocation of virtue to Buddha has been traditionally transmitted in Theravada Buddhism. Yeah. You see, this is, I would say this is very Indian, typical Indian. You look at the way they, you know, uh, describe uh, the way they, extol you know, the virtue of their God. Huh? They also have all kind of uh, the qualities describing their God, you see? So, yeah, you said whether it's already transmitted Terra Buddhism. Yeah, even everywhere you find the same, like in Mahayana also the same thing, you see? Because like if you read this, uh, what do you call it? Yeah? The mantra. Uh, uh, you know, if you look at the Mahayana Sutra, also like that. Also like that, huh? so same thing. You see all kind of virtues uh, describing a uh, lenyen so also the same thing and what they call ta pe and the great mantra also like that. 
you, you find all kinds of uh, the virtues, the qualities describing uh, uh, the Buddhas or, or Bodhisattvas or something like that. Okay, so this is not the uh, necessary Theravada uh, because uh, this is way of, uh, you know, the mantra chant, uh, this is way of the sutra chanting. Uh, so we have to praise the Buddhas, you know, so that we have faith in the Buddhas. Uh, so I should say, you know, by reciting these, it helps to strengthen our faith, right, to the, to the Buddhas. Okay, so anything more? No? Uh, so far, only one question, Bhante. Okay, so we continue, yeah? Yes, Bhante, thank you. Yeah. Ye chapi ni bhuta loke yata bhuta vipasi song te jana api sunat mahanta bit sarda. Okay, so you look at this. Ye te is a relative pronoun. Okay, others who they uh, the kind of translation. And nibuta is clearly PPP, right? Past participle is from the root brut, mean to cover. So here the extinguished. Okay. <clears throat> and we pass this on. Huh? So I think this is probably a, a bit heavy for you. So anyway, in our class, uh, uh, you need not to find it yourself. Uh, I will prepare everything for you <laughs> so that you can look at the grammar. We pass this on his is the person singular, right? From the root past, mean to see. So in this kata person singular like they saw that kind of meaning huh? they saw huh? and of course you have to know who are they lah, huh? and then yata bhut here is here is adverb okay mean as it is uh, huh? okay <laughs> then you can look at the jhana 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 means the people is nominative plural huh? probably here they refer to the people apisuna <clears throat> uh, this is the, you know, never slander. Uh, ah, pisuna, uh, slander. But ah means no, uh, no slander. Atta is indeclinable. Huh? Mm. Uh, indeclinable, like dain or so, you know, mahanta uh, is from nominative plural, right? Mahanta is from the mahan. <coughs> okay, mahan. You see, all these forms I use, I follow the international standard, okay, that used by the international scholars, right? Like this, just now, uh, uh, one of our <clears throat> students uh, talking about this uh, Chakuman, right? Chakumantu. You see, this form is used by mostly by Sri Lankan. You see, they were, you know, but, but I think in order to not to make confusion, you know, we had to standardize, you know, make it standard. You know, follow the international you know practice. Uh, so you have to put it like chakuman or chakumat. Uh, this two form. Okay, I don't know whether you follow or not. <coughs> this is how we have seen that particular word. Huh? Mm. Okay, like for example, chaku. Okay, chaku. Chaku means eyes. Huh? When you have the mat or man, you can put in blanket. Yeah, man. Huh? Uh, earlier you put like chakuman too. This form. Of course, this is this is a form used in Sri Lanka. Now, at that time when I was in Sri Lanka, you know, we learned all this kind of form. But I think students may not really get it because you look at the two like that, you thought that this is a U ending. Uh, and you were translated wrongly. Yeah. So I think we better follow this, this method. So this man means possessive suffix. Okay, possessive suffix. So similarly, also Bhagavan. You know, Sri Lanka will use like Bhagavan too. But more correct is Bhagavan. Okay, this one more correct. So this is a form used internationally. Uh, so we, we better follow the international standard better. Huh? Otherwise, you won't be able to read other texts as well, you know, because they all follow the, stand, the international standard. Uh, okay, Mahanta also the same thing, right? Then I will say that from Mahan, Mahan uh, 
Uh, and then Vita Sarada is from Vita and Sarada. So you have two word, two member, Vita and Sarada. Okay, now you look at the Vita, right? Vita is a PPP, right? It's a V and Ita. <laughs> so, so, you know, deprived or free from that kind of meaning. Huh? And Sarada, uh, unbright or not experienced, immature, fear, daunted, okay, that kind of meaning. Now, Okay, we analyze the grammar. So we split out the Sunday. Uh, split out the Sunday. Uh, like ch api. Uh, we split out, not chapi. Huh? So you see, uh, this form is chapi. Is it chapi? Is it chapi? Now you split the Sunday, become ch api. Uh, ch api. <coughs> okay. And uh, here you have the underline here to show you that this is an object. And this is a subject. Huh? So as usual, we look at the verb. If there is no verb, we look at those having the verbal function, those, uh, those participle form. So in this case, Nibuta is a participle, right? Participle. You see this participle is also long A. It seems that this is an adjective describing to the subject, okay? The subject. Uh, it says the subject here is a, <clears throat> is a year, right? Though year and te is a relative pronoun, but uh, you also can describe to it. So is it Nibutta? <clears throat> and then what else? Uh, locate is locative, right? Locative. And the check here is enclatic, like and, you know, you have to continue saying something. Api is also indeclinable, right? Api is indeclinable. Hmm. Okay, and this is that's why I put n, <clears throat> uh, so that you can see clearly the ch n. Those who is a ye, okay? And have extinguished is a nibutta, have extinguished. Also, it's because of api. Okay? <clears throat> uh, api. And those who have also distinguished. <clears throat> Hmm. Distinguish what? Okay, all flames. So you have to understood the context. <laughs> extinguish means I should put a black cat. Huh? All flames of passion. <laughs> uh, it means extinguish all deformance. Huh? Extinguish all deformance. You locate is a locate, it means in this book. I think I better change it so you can see clearly. Extinguish all deformance. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, let's take all the form in this world. And next. Yatabhutam, we perceive so. Here we perceive so is a, also a verb, right? So it's a third person plural. So refer to those who have already distinguished, extinguished. To refer to those people who have already extinguished or deformed. Refer to those people, okay? So they saw, what? As it is, Yatabhutam, the adverb. Okay? So, saw. So, they saw thing as they really are. Okay, so thing as they really are is the yata Buddha. Is it clear now? So this is also very good uh, Pali structure. So when I'm teaching Pali and Sanskrit, I have to go back to all these suttas and take all the, <laughs> the sentence like this. Huh? So they learn directly from the suttas. <clears throat> mm. Then next, Te jana apisuna at mahanta vita sarada. Ye and te, so it's a relative pronoun. Huh? So those who, mean they, okay, so this is kind of more like affirmative. Huh? Uh, they, those people, uh, those who have, uh, they, then the people, huh? those people. <laughs> okay, the apisuna, adjective to the jana. They in fact is also adjective to the jhana. Huh? Okay. Um, then those, these people, okay. <laughs> uh, you see they are arahat already. <laughs> Being arahat. Um, 
Okay, so you have to under the con under, understand the context. Tapi huh? sona, you see, though it is a noun, adjective, but you can put them in verb. Never slander. Okay, so, so there is this uh, flexibility in, in the Pali and Sanskrit structures. <clears throat> Atta then, Mahanta Vitasara. Is it all this nominative plural? All this nominative plural. So describing the person also, huh? the person. Okay, all describing the person. So, so you see, if you learn like that, you can translate. Isn't it? You have to be able to identify the grammar correctly. Huh? Then you can see the trans you, you see their relationship. Huh? So these people be arahat, never slander. Okay. <clears throat> then atta. Okay. <laughs> so you are referring to those people. They are great. They are great. Mahanta. Okay. Or they are mighty. They are great. Okay. Mahan. And vita sarada means free from fear. Okay, or vita mean free more correctly, uh, in uh, right in translation freed. Okay, or they are great and are freed from fear if you want, are freed from fear. Okay, or just simply uh, fearless. That's also okay. Vita sarada. Huh? Okay, because vita is a PPP. You want to be more exact in your translation so that you know we can see whether you understand the grammar. You can say are free from fear. Uh, I, I translate it again. And Okay, uh, they are great. Okay, they are mighty and are freed from fear. Okay, so you get it, huh? So this one is more, it's more, more correct. Huh? But of course, this is meant for our internal uh, studies, huh? and of course, you want to get it published. Uh, you get someone to polish it for you. Huh? So, but then next, any question so far, Russell? There's no Mente. <laughs> Maybe very clear. <laughs> <laughs> now we continue. Okay. Uh, continue. Hitam Deva Manusanam Yang Namasanti Gotamam Vija Charna Sampana Mahanta Vitasarada. This is also okay. Uh, Hitam uh, is. Uh, here the grammar is much uh, accusative, right? Benefits. Huh? Deo manasana is genitive of gods and men, right? And namasanti, santi, right? the anti sita mima. So anti is a third person plural. Uh, but in this case, it's the denominative. Okay. You know what is denominative again? Reminder. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so denominative. Denominative is a verb huh, derived from now. Verb derived from now. <clears throat> okay, for example, uh, you look at these words, namas. <clears throat> namas is a noun, okay? This is in the stem form, namas, right? Uh, then you want to turn this into a denominative, right? Uh, then it become, you know, make it, make it simple like uh, Namasanti. Or oh, there is another one also like Pala. Pala is a noun, mean protect. This is a protection, right? Now, it's a, this is a noun. Uh, so you want to make it a denominative. There is a form, it's called Palayati. Huh? A. Is in fix a palayati, so they become to protect. He protects. It's from now. So similarly, this form is also the same. Uh, you know, this from the norm, namas become namasanti. Okay. 
then it means they respect, huh? they worship. So this is <coughs> the usage. Uh, Vija Charna Sampana. Uh, again, this Sampana <coughs> is also a past participle. There are plenty of past participle. Sampana. Uh, and this past, past participle now <coughs> uh, <coughs> is the whole thing become is is accusative and dull. If you look at this English word and dull with knowledge and conduct. Okay, so this is also compound and dull with, right? And okay, yeah. then mahantang is from mahan. When you decline the accusative, mean mahantang like bakavantang. You see, um, of course, this one I find it. I don't think you can understand it <laughs> for now, but I think you can. You know. You can feel it. Yeah? You can feel it. I want you to know the, the grammar only as to how to form these things. I think you need to have another comprehensive grammar class for all these things. <laughs> At least I'm giving you all the grammar term, right? So you can follow this. Huh? Because I want to show the relationship is there. Yeah? So that's why we have additional Pali class, uh, additional Pali grammar class for you to pick up all these grammars. Huh? And someone asked me, you know, for how long you can master this Pali grammar? Of course, of course it's very difficult to answer. Huh? But I have heard from one of a very, my teacher, Professor Damajoti. Uh, you know, he is very, very serious to his students. <laughs> and he said a very serious students, um, they can pick up the Pali grammar enough, just only one year. Imagine you only pick up the Pali class just only for my few hours class. Uh, so, <laughs> so I, I know your problems. I know your difficulties. So, and because of that, you see, I give all the grammar to you and you can see how, you how I translate. So this is my purpose. And that is also all of my compassion for you. <laughs> and with the Sarada is also accusative and the young is also related to pronoun. Who? Okay, now we look at this. <clears throat> Hitang Deva Manusana, Yang Namasanti. You see, this kind of structures, um, you know, can be everywhere. You cannot, you cannot analyze from word by word like this. Uh, you have to find the verb. After verb, you go to the subject. After subject, you go to the object. Then basically, you get the whole things right. Uh, so in this case, you know, you have to go to the verb. <clears throat> uh, so verb is a Namasanti. The person, or oh, not singular, plural. Okay, problem. Uh, then the subject is, is, is not there, right? <clears throat> subject is not there, but understood mean they, they worship. Worship, worship whom? Then object is a Gautama. Okay, Gautama. So they worship. Uh, <clears throat> Gautama. So this Yang, uh, Gautama. This Yang mean, <clears throat> it's also relative pronoun, but how you see how you fit in. And then also hitam is also accusative, right? Hitam also describing that. <laughs> so you had to you had to you put them in, huh? Deva manusana is the genetic problem. I mean, among the god and men, genetic problem. So they pay homage, understood, right? To Gautama, and who works for the benefits. Here, they pitam. Here, describing they, you know, gautamang. Gautamang who work for the benefit. Here. Okay. <laughs> of gods and men, you see? So, <clears throat> you see, when I look at this young, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it in, right? So, there is no translation for this. Sometimes you cannot fit in, you see. So sometimes some of these words are uh, uh, we call it the auxiliary verb, auxiliary, you know, additional thing. 
So they to make the, the sentence um, more, what do you call it? When you pronounce it, uh, it's more even. <laughs> it's more even. Uh, just like uh, atako, you know, that kind of uh, uh, kopana, you know, they, sometimes it's just, it's just just there. Huh? So you need not to translate something like that. So in this case, also the same thing, but the grammar is there. Huh? Yang Gautama. Huh? <clears throat> so they pay homage to Gautama Buddhas. Okay. Then because hitang, adjective to Gautama, so you can say, work for the benefits. In fact, the word hitang means the definites, uh, the, the benefits. So who works for the benefits <clears throat> of the gods and men? And yeah, remember these are all the verses. Huh? So usually in the verses, uh, you have to uh, explain a little bit. Uh, explain. Like in this case, I explain a little bit. Uh, words for the benefits. Then again, Vija Charna Sampana. Here is Sampana. It's also accusative, also adjective to Gautama. Okay. It means the one who endowed with Vija and Charna. Okay. Who is endowed with knowledge? Vija Charna means the conduct. Okay. Means seeing true. Endowed. So this is a PPP. Okay. So also describing adjective to Gautama. So who endowed with knowledge and conduct? <clears throat> and Mahantam and Vitasarana also the same thing describing the Gautama. Huh? Uh, so you have to get, get it correct. Sarana is also describing the Gautama. So how to translate it? Mahantam, who is mighty or who is great, right? The Gautama who is great and freed from fear. Okay, free, F R E D, free from fear, right? Uh, so you see, so in this case, uh, you can beautifully translate, but of course, you have to get the grammar right. Uh, if your grammar is not right, uh, your translation becomes so messy uh, or completely wrong. Uh, so usually, you look at someone's translations, uh, you can also see how he, how he analyzes the structures. Is it okay, Dhammapiya? Yeah, you learned so many years already, yeah? <laughs> okay, so is there any question?